Welcome everybody to the Launch Like a Coach Summit, where we talk about how to transform your marketing, fill your programs, and unlock the secrets of heart-centered launches. My name is Milana Lashinsky, and this event is brought to you by Coaching Genie, which is a super cool, easy-to-use coaching platform that takes care of all the moving parts of working with clients, so you can just shop and coach and deliver a lot of value and a high touch client experience. And if you want to learn more about this platform, go to coachinggenie.com. And I'm so excited about my next guest and the topic that we're going to cover today. Martha Wilson, welcome. Hi, so excited to be here with you, Milana. Yeah, so excited I, about this summit. I think I think you were the first guest speaker that I invited and you said yes, because it was such a great fit. We're going to talk about how to hit your launch goals without procrastination, chaos, or burnout, because those are the three things that um, are associated with launching anything and launching a coaching program, uh, particularly in our conversation. So we're going to really look at how to do this without all of that stress. Um, and I'm going to introduce you. Uh, when I peeked at your introduction this morning, I noticed something that I never knew about you before. So Martha Wilson is a former soldier, spy, and a C-level corporate executive turned transformation success coach, transformational success coach. Uh, leaders and entrepreneurs hire Martha when they are struggling to navigate the pressures of increasing success, which is what launch uh, is all about is you're going to grow you're gonna um, just really take your business to a whole new level and Martha shows uh, them how to how to harness their strongest most natural internal capacities so that they can move past their hidden edge ad edges and take the limits off their goals their income and their future so welcome again um, Thank Martha you. Um, love having you here. I, you know, we've met in person, which is rare for me to say about my guest speaker, <laughs> since we're all online, we're all virtual, but um, I had the pleasure of spending three days with you at the event um, earlier this year, and I'm so happy you're here. Your official title is Transformational Success Coach, also known as the Leadership Architect. So I love having you on this day of our event and the first day of the event. Uh, really leading us into understanding how to do a launch without stress, because we all want to stay heart centered. We don't want to, you know, we're creating a lifestyle business. So let me ask you, start by asking you, is it important to set launch goals as we are, um, you know, coming into this conversation? Um, is it important to have launch, launch goals? Um, do we need to set them? Is it something that is a must? Um, I, I'm going to stop here and just uh, bring you in. Yeah, so this whole concept of goals, and, and I just want to reassure you and everybody else, be before you start thinking, oh, gee, Martha was a soldier and a spy and a C-level corporate exec, she must love goals and, you know, knock them out like ping and cans off a fence. Yeah. Let me assure you <laughs> that that is not the case. So for one thing, I was a person who always hated goals. I hated goals. And I'll tell you why. Because for me, I mean, even in my CIA career, they told me, you got to have a goal. You got to have a goal. You got to have a goal. And so I would try to set a goal. But the problem was either I'd set this really big goal. And every time I look at the goal, I'm like, I'm not there yet. I, I don't have enough time. How is this ever going to possibly work? The days are going, I should be doing more. I should be moving faster. It should just, should just, should just, should just. So then I was like, okay, that's not working. And, and I would get so in this spin. I was like, I'm not actually, I'm not doing anything. Or I'm not doing anything effectively. I'm doing a bunch of stuff. I'm really busy. I'm cooking you know, stirring up a lot of dust, but I'm not accomplishing anything. I was like, okay, so that didn't work. So then I tried, well, let me just set a smaller goal, right? <sighs> Except that didn't work either. Because I'd set this little goal and because it was a little goal, either I'd hit the goal and then I'm like, well, it doesn't really matter 
because it's not big enough. It, it wasn't, wasn't what enough. I really wanted. Or because it was a little goal that wasn't what I really wanted, then I wouldn't do anything at all. And then that would turn into, well, heck, you can't even hit the little goal on what planet makes you think you can hit a big one. <laughs> so then I tried having no goals at all because I thought, well, at least if I don't have a goal, then I'm not putting this pressure on myself, right? Exactly. Except the, except the problem with that was any success I had, any progress I made felt like some kind of happy accident just outside of my control, which, and because it was a happy accident, it wasn't repeatable. And to make matters worse, because there was no goal, I never knew when I got to rest. Hmm. I never knew when I, I, it was the sense of my homework is never done. Wow. And I'm like, holy cow, this is a no win situation. There has got to be a different approach to this. Yeah. And I, I distinctly remember 12 years ago when I'm, I'm sitting there with my head in my hands, I'm like, I got to crack the code on this well, because I know I'm a smart cookie. I've done some pretty amazing things in my life. I am a, an accomplished individual. So what in the devil is up with me and goals? And that, that's what started me on this journey to figure out what happens inside of me, what happens inside of you, what happens inside of all of us when we come to stepping up in a bigger way, putting ourselves out there in a bigger way, getting our work and our message and our, and our mission out in the world in a bigger way. Well, and I can tell you that to me, when I hear the word goals, when my friend is asking me, so Milana, what's your goal for this launch? What happens inside of me is, oh my God, I have to hustle, push, grind, all this pressure. And then worst of all is disappointment when I don't meet the goal. And like you were saying, there's some things, there's a lot of things outside of our control. So even if we set a goal, um, I don't necessarily know how to reach that goal. Um, I am already giving it my all. Um, and I love what you said about, you know, when you don't have goals, then you don't know when to rest and when to take a break. With launches, it's actually very simple. You rest when you're done with your launch, on your cart close, it's done, right? right. And, and whatever your result that came in, there it is. You can see mm -hmm. the results. And so with, with launching a coaching program, you typically kind of know how big of a group you want, um, what it would be worth your time investment every week to coach people, right? Um, or if you do one-on-one -on -one coaching and it's a one-on-one, -on -one, maybe you're launching a VIP day, whatever it is you're launching, um, you still know that this is how many clients you want in your program. Um, so yeah, let's keep talking. So how do you hit those non-goals in your <laughs> launch without feeling um, stressed out and the pressure of pushing and continuing to push. Yeah, yeah. So I think the first thing to know, to remember, to understand is the difference between a to-do, a project, and a goal. Because the thing is, those, ten, those three things tend to get very confused, particularly when we get into this entrepreneurial space. So a to-do is something that you know how to do, and it has a timeline on it. And, you know, if you've got a lot of to-dos that come together to create one big thing, that's a project. And you may consider, in fact, your launch as a project. There are lots of pieces and parts that come together to make your launch happen. But let's what, talk about what a goal is really supposed to be. A true goal, a real goal, the, the purpose of an actual goal is supposed to be to pull you into that next highest version of you. And in fact, ideally, you don't know how to get to your goal. 
That's the whole point. The whole point of having a goal is not necessarily to hit the goal, the goal, quote, the target. The whole point of the goal is to pull you forward to to stretch you to expand you to explore you and and quite frankly to find out just frankly just how magnificent you already are and give your give you a chance to get in touch with that so whether it's your first launch or your third launch or your 50th launch the project is the launch. And and even if you've never launched before, there may be aspects within that project that you don't quite know how to do. That's why you have a coach. That's why you have a system. That's why you have tools and blueprints and formulas and a place to start from. But the goal, in in, in my mind, the goal is to explore what is the kind of launch that I want to have? How do I want to feel as I go through this launch? What is it, what is the experience I want to create for my people as I go through this launch? That's the goal. And then the numbers, the results at the end, that's the icing on top. That's the gravy. Yeah. That, and that that's e almost your scoreboard to say, wow, look at the things that I nailed this time around that I knocked out of the park. And oh, where are some places that maybe next time could be more fun, could be even more easy, could even be more uplifting for my people? So the numbers is not the right goal from what I'm hearing you say. Uh, and um, the numbers is what a lot of marketers strive mm -hmm. for. That's where the goals are. Um, and, you know, this event is called Launch Like a Coach. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was creating the name for, for this event, uh, in my head, I said Launch Like a Coach not like a marketer. <laughs> oh, I love that. Right. I and love that. Of course, launch is all about marketing. But um, what I love about what you're saying is that we can set goals um, in terms of the things that we do have control over, like the tasks, the to do's, mm -hmm. the timeline. Um, and, you know, sometimes when I don't like my numbers, I just go back to like, okay, just follow the process that I outlined for myself. It doesn't matter what happens. I'm just doing my best and I follow the process. Mm -hmm. And that kind of calms me down. So I want to repeat the questions that you said, because I think that they're really important for everybody to answer. What kind of a launch would you like to have? How do you want to feel about your launch? And what kind of experience do you want to create for your people that are watching you and are engaging and participating. Um, and maybe I'll add what kind of experience I, you want to create for those who say yes, like for yes. the clients, what should they be experiencing? Um, and you said purpose of a goal. So that's interesting. That That's a whole conversation, Martha. A purpose of a goal <laughs> for a lot of people is to know that you've succeeded. When you hit your goal, you're successful. You didn't hit your goal, you failed. And now you can mm -hmm. go and beat yourself up right. <laughs> and cry. And that is the part that drives me crazy because mm -hmm. that is the, that, that right there is the piece that, that has so many amazing people, so many incredible called coaches that could make such a phenomenal impact in this world. That is precisely the piece that has them doing the undercover launches because they they can't bear the possibility of the disappointment, the heartbreak, 
in some cases, and, I, and I'm this is a word that none of us like to use, but I'm going to go ahead and go there. Their experience of humiliation. Mm. If they told somebody, this was my goal, and that was yeah. a number, and this was my result. And if there's a gap between that, those two, it can be gutting to somebody. Embarrassing. And it can feel embarrassing. Yes. And when I say gutting, or I, I mean that embarrassment almost like causes a collapse in the core that says, and 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 you can probably, or maybe it's just me. I don't know. I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna say it happens to you, but maybe it's just me. It it makes me want to curl up in a ball and go hide under the bed somewhere. I think we all experience that, but maybe uh, trained ourselves to get up and try again. To but suck not- it up and muscle through. And that's yeah. it, that's precisely where that intensity around the procrastination and the chaos that leads to the burnout comes from. Yeah, yeah. Well, so you're, you're saying that the purpose of a goal, to me, the purpose of a goal was always, do I want to be excited or scared or a little anxious, you know, kind of anxiously excited to hopefully reach that goal. And um, if I do, I am, you know, on cloud nine. And if I don't, I beat myself up. And I think a lot of us do that. But what you're saying is you want to use a goal as a way to pull yourself into the next highest version of you and to stretch yourself maybe outside your comfort zone or what you're typically doing. Um, So I, I really like that is, a goal is just to stretch yourself a little bit more than you typically would, which was is what a launch really is. You know, mm-hmm. trying to see how many people can you put into your coaching program using the methods that you have learned, and then do better each time that you are running a launch. I want to talk about the comparison. I call it the comparison trap, mm-hmm. where we compare our goals, launch goals, our launches and our launch results to other people who are very vocal about their results, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that that will make people push themselves harder, but not necessarily in a positive way. Can you talk about that? Yeah, and you're you're hitting on something that I think is is so incredibly important. Every single one of us is wired differently when it comes to goals, when it comes to our relationship with goals, and more importantly, when it comes to the thing that pulls us forward, that I'm going to use the word motivation, which is not, it's not quite accurate, but it's the best word I've got right now. So that's what we're going to go with, but it's this internal uprising energy, this internal uprising fire that pulls you forward. Every one of us is wired differently around that. There are some people who are wired such that, yeah, an actual number is in fact the thing that pulls them forward. There are some people who will say, and I'm just going to make up numbers off the top of my head, you know, my goal is 10 clients in this program. And for them, you know, every client that comes in is like, yeah, I'm one step closer. Yeah. What's one more thing I can do for them? There's no pressure or hustle in there. There's thrill. There's adventure. There's excitement. Other people, if you take those numbers and put them in front of them, it'll shut them down. There are some people who are drawn forward by who can I be? How can I make this easier for myself? What makes me feel expanded? How can I show up? And for them, it's you know, it, it, it's the experience of the launch itself that energizes, that pulls forward, that motivates. And it's not the numbers. For other people, the thing that's driving them is, what is the impact I can make on another human's heart? 
And how can I touch their heart in a way that maybe their, their heart has never been touched before, never been opened before? There are other people for whom the thing that pulls them forward is the capacity to care, to create a container where another human feels seen, heard, held, and respected in a way that they never have before. And notice how each of those is very, very different. But it's all directly related to the launch and to yes. the goal. You know, I, I as you were describing the different motivators of, you know, for different kinds of people, I remember doing a launch many years ago um, while I was traveling um, to Germany. I just had a trip uh, with my mom and I got everything ready and I left. And then my team took over the launch. And I remember thinking, I don't even care about the results. My launch is currently actively going and I'm in Germany and I'm traveling and I'm with my, my mom. Um, so it felt really good. That was the motivation is like, how can I do a launch and not be stressed out? Oh, I can just prepare everything and leave. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm curious how you would respond to this, uh, Martha. I talked to somebody and they said, I had just, I just had an amazing launch. I feel so amazing. I had shared so much amazing content. My visibility has just exploded and people were loving it, really engaged. And all I remember thinking was, yeah, but did you make any sales? So, you know, here is one person who is feeling amazing about their launch and I'm focusing on the results as in like the financials and mm -hmm. the, the, the money outcomes. Because um, mm -hmm. we want to do a launch to create visibility and, you know, really be a little bit louder about our business, which is what I believe a launch is for, is you just elevate your voice in your mm -hmm. niche. But when you don't have the numbers, can you really call it a successful launch? So I'm going to come at this question from multiple directions because I think there are multiple aspects of it. Number one, as far as I'm concerned, any launch that you do and you take across the finish line is a success. Full stop. Why? Because what you have done is you have created an asset. Mm. Never, ever, ever again will you have to create from scratch. Mm. Oh, you, can, so you can refine, you can hone, you can polish, but never again will you have to create something out of nothing. And that is a big deal. I call it a BFHD, big, fat, hairy deal. <laughs> <laughs> so that's number one. And the second half of that conversation is, yeah, we have got to create revenue. Revenue, income, cash, clients, money. That is the lifeblood of our business. That is the thing that allows our business con to continue to run. So yes, revenue does have to be part of the conversation. Now, let's say you did get to the end of the launch and you did not create the income, the revenue that you wanted to in that moment. Okay. Okay. That's a data point. It's not a sign of failure. In fact, it is a sign of success because you, in fact, have done the launch. And you do have assets now that you did not have before you did the launch. So then the exploratory question becomes, okay, how can I? What is the step I'm willing to take? It, it's you're continually moving forward. And the truth is, if you have created that energy, if you have created that forward movement by doing the launch, by creating the asset, 
Now you have tools, resources, assets at your disposal that you did not have before. You have access to potential clients that you did not have before. It may simply be they needed one more step with you. Maybe they needed one more conversation. Maybe they needed one more little nudge. So I think, yes, you can call it a successful launch because of the fact that you did it. And the other point is, don't stop. The only time your launch becomes a failure, a true failure, is when you quit. That's a really good point. That's a really good point. I love the idea that a launch is an asset. The materials that you create, whether it's a webinar, emails, um, a lead magnet, you know, whatever we're going to cover in this event, all of those even the mechanical automation that you had to put together to get people to show up, the the yes. cart closed string, all of that, it's it's an asset. Definitely. Yeah. Well, you talked about the different types of goals uh, and, and motivators for people. And I know you have a gift for our audience. Martha, please tell us about your gift. Oh, I would love to. So this is a three-part video series. I want you to think of it as an actual mini course because that's what it is. But remember how I said it's important to understand how you personally individually are wired when it comes to goals, this is exactly what this mini course will do for you. It walks you through a process so that you discover for yourself how you're wired when it comes to goals. You know, one of, one of the things that, that drives me a little bit nuts is that Everybody's trying to shove you into a box, into a framework, into a formula, into a blueprint. But every single one of us as a human, when we are tapping into our own highest potential, when we are stepping into that next level leader inside of us, I'm sorry to tell you, there is no formula for it. Well, there is a formula, but it's not the same formula for everybody. It's not the same framework. For everybody, you have to discover your own framework. The good news is the process for discovering that framework is the same for everybody. So what this gift does is it, it walks you through the process, creates this little mini laboratory for you to find out how you are wired when it comes to goals. And it's called the CIA Spy Secrets to Getting Big Goals. I love that. We're going to put a link underneath the video. The link is actually launchlikeacoach.com slash Martha. Um, and I want to ask you one final question, uh, Martha. So for people who have never launched before, there is a bit of a, like an emotional and a mental hurdle to step over and finally do the launch. Uh, but there is still that fear of all those things that we don't want to experience, the chaos, the burnout. Um, what would you say to those people who are excited to launch their program and you know, put a lot of eyes on, on their business, but at the same time are concerned how it's gonna work and how it's gonna fit into their lives. Yeah, so a couple of things. First of all, you are the captain of you. It's your launch. You can create your launch the way you want it to be. The second piece is so often that angst, that concern comes from exactly the conversation we were having earlier around, well, what if mine doesn't compare to somebody else's? Or even what if mine doesn't compare to my own internal, often unrealistic standards? And I would simply say to you, in that case, it does not matter where you start. It matters that you start. Mm -hmm. Just take one step forward, one at a time, and enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. Launch is going to be a lot of fun, but only if you allow yourself to be 
you in your launch. And this is what I love about your message. Because what does your launch say about you? I'm thinking, what does my launch say about me? What do my launch results say about me? Uh, do they say that I am an, a genius, brilliant entrepreneur, or actually that I uh, was never meant to be an entrepreneur? Or, you know, like all those thoughts that kind of start entering our minds as we're looking at our launch results or worrying about what it might be. What does your launch say about you? Yeah. And the the secret is the 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 true secret behind that is there is exactly one person on the planet who gets to decide what your what your launch says about you. And that's you. Yeah, for sure. And to wrap up, I will say one thing is that having been in the coaching space and in the marketing and the business space for 23 years, I can tell you that all those successful marketers and business owners and top coaches, they've all had failed launches. Yep. They just don't talk about them. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. They got up and improved and went on to do the next one. Because I, I have a philosophy. There's no such thing as failure. There's what you wanted to or expected to happen. There's what actually happened. And the space in between is data. Ooh, I love that. That takes all the emotion out of it. It's just data. It's It's data. data. Thank you so much, Martha. This was... um enlightening conversation for sure and so (laughs) fitting on the first day of the event about launches um i want to give people the link one more time to grab your free gift which is the cia spy secrets to getting big goals and finding your way to set goals launch like a coach.com slash martha thank you so much again and hopefully we'll see you again soon bye everybody